Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In the previous video, we learned about how caching works in WordPress. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to implement caching in WordPress. So first of all, by default, the WP object cache class is defined, but it only implements a runtime cache, which means the data is going to be lost in the next page request. So it is not persistent. Now, since WordPress cannot decide whether or not you have a storage engine to make the object cache persistent, and because it has to make sure that the use of the object cache API does not cause fatal errors, it implements a default WP object cache class. This default class merely stores data in a PHP variable during the runtime and is not persistent. However, it can be overridden. So it can be overridden by your plugins or you can write your own caching strategy. To define your own object cache, you must add a file to the WP content named object-cache.php. If this file is defined, it will be loaded instead of the default class. So WordPress is going to look for this file. If this file exists, great, is going to look for your caching implementation in this file. But if it doesn't, then it's just going to use your default WP object cache class. Now this file is also known as WordPress drop-in. So sometimes you will hear developers talking about add your drop-in. They are talking about adding your object-cache.php file. A few different object cache PHP files exist in the plugin repo for different caching engines. So depending on which plugin you're using for implementing your caching engine, you will see a different implementation of this file. So for our purposes, we are going to use W3 total cache plugin. It's a free plugin. As you can see that uh, it has got like 1 million plus installs and it gives you lots of benefits. So let's go ahead and install this. So as you can see, I've added the plugin W3 total cache and then you can go to the settings. And then you can go to the settings. You can see that it gives you different options such as enable page cache. Where do you want to store it like on disk or not? In case if you have um, a Redis server, then you select the Redis or if you have memcache, then use that. If you want to minify the CSS and JavaScript file, database cache, object cache. So I'm not going to go through everything here, but you can see it gives you different options like CDN, browser cache if you want to enable that or not okay but we are mainly interested right now for this video purposes is the object cache so click on the enable and select the option as disk right now i don't have the memcache or edit server as you can see here we have these options that's why i'm not using those but if you do if you do have a hosting provider that offers you this memcache and redis enable then you can use that but I'm just going with the disk. So we're just going to save the cache on the disk just for the uh, demonstration purposes. Okay, so you go ahead and check that, select disk and save all settings. Once you do that, then let's go ahead and write our caching. So let's write a function called get cache data. I'm just using a key for the cache called nav menu data. Now WordPress has a function called WP cache get to get the cache data and WP cache set to set the cache data okay so if you take a look at this function wp cache set you can see that it's inside it's inside of the wp includes uh, cache.php and it uses a wp object cache which is a global variable and it sets all of this information so it requires a key for retrieving later the data you want to store in the cache uh, cache group like let's say that you have multiple cache data but you want to group them together let's say it's related to a particular custom post type and you want to group everything all the cache data into that group then you can use the group name here okay which will be a string and then the expiration time and you can keep it optional also so of course if you don't give an expiration time then it's just going to treat that as zero and then cache will never get expired unless you go ahead and burst it yourself so that's the job of that so before setting it we are getting it so that in case if it was set we don't really uh, let's say then this is the point where you were 
let's say this is the point where you are doing the database query i'm not actually doing it i'm just showing it to you let's say this is the point we do the database query so what's going to happen you have a key you check if the cache is set get the data okay and in case um, if it's not empty of course just going to return it from the cache but if it is empty which means let's say it was the first request you do the database query let's say this function was there was a function here which was responsible to getting the data from the database doing the query you do the query you get the data and then you use the function called wp cache set you give the key name in this case nav menu data you pass the data so the data that we have got from the database and then you put the and this one is your cache group this is the group let's say you want to group different caches together so your group name this is your key name and then you just set that into the database okay so let's call this function so i'm just going to go to my plugin here and i'm just going to call the function get cache data and let's see what happens so if i go to this and if i do a refresh you can see that we have this data super and sa i'll just change it to hello if i refresh you can see that i'm not really getting this new data which means the database query is not being implemented so if i do database query queried you'll see that we're not getting that why because it already cached that information and now it's getting that information from the cache so if i want to go ahead and burst the cache i can go to the object cache here and i can click on the empty cache right if i empty the cache and now if i go back and uncomment this and refresh you can see that it says on top let me just do a wp die here just to show you yeah there you go now you can see we have super and we have hello we have hello right so earlier the database query was done but now there isn't so if i do a, again a refresh you can see that there's nothing called database query if you clear the cache again if you refresh again now you will not see any database query which means it's getting the information from the cache okay excellent so that's how caching works now if you want to see where it's stored you can actually go to wp content cache and then look for let's say super so this is where it's stored into your disk you can see this is where it's stored it's under object 299c5c let's open that so that's your file you can see it's under cache object 299 slash c5c so whatever the number is using it but that's your data right you can see that this is your data being stored on the disk itself so it's not really storing on the redis server or the memcache server but if you had those enabled if you had those redis cache if you had the redis or the memcache server then it would be saved there on that server but since we're using the disk it's just storing it here just for demonstration purposes okay so that's pretty much how the caching works in wordpress and this is your class class wp object cache this is your wordpress class okay and if you take a look this plugin has actually added this object hyphen cache.php file and it has implemented all the caching here so w3 total cache plugin has actually overridden the WP object cache class and it's using its own caching implementation here. Okay, uh, so this is for object cache. And if you want to, of course, override the page cache, you create an advanced hyphen cache.php file and you do the implementation here. But we don't have to worry about all of that because the plugin does it for us. There are other plugins also for caching which you can try. So there's WP Redis plugin, there's Redis object cache plugin. So these are the plugins that are also available for Redis. So coming back to this class. So if you look at this class, there are different functions available, like set function is used for setting the data contents into the cache. Then you have the set multiple. You can set multiple values to the cache in one call. You have the get, which retrieves the cache content if it exists. 
then you have the get multiple again retrieves multiple values in a single call you have caching delete option delete multiple you can flush the cache this clears the cache for all the data the different functions available so it's not like a big class so you can take a look at how things are working here all right so it has put all the information like this is the core class that implements an object cache and it clearly states that this object cache is used to save on the trips to database because database queries are expensive and it also talks about what we explained that the object cache can be replaced by other caching mechanism by placing files in the wp content folder which is looked by wp settings if that file exists then this file will not be included